he comes, here he comes, then the trumpets, then the drums, here he comes, up along Cassidy. since I had been down here in the border district at Las Cruces, but I remembered it well because some of the finest saddle horses in the country came from this part of the Southwest. My saddle pal, Red Connors, and I were down here on government business. Three weeks ago, the Army had made a deal with the owners of the Whitley Ranch for more than 600 horses to be used for cavalry mounts. And just three days ago, the Whitley outfit had sent word that they couldn't deliver. The entire roundup had been stolen. Trouble was brewing in Cuba. That country was to begin a fight for freedom. And since the U.S. was ready to step in on Cuba's side, those horses were needed right now. My mission was to find them and see that they got to the railhead. Just ahead was the Whitley Ranch House, where I meant to begin my job by questioning the foreman who had been in charge when the horses were stolen. How did this happen, Mr. Burke? We had the whole lot grazing down in the south section. The morning we were due to start the drive to the railhead, we found they'd all disappeared overnight. Well, it's kind of hard to believe that 625 head of horses just vanish into thin air. Ours did, and right across the Mexican border. You think the rustlers were Mexicans? What else could they have been? We followed the trail of those horses right to the line, and that trail went across the border. Well, I just asked because this would be the first time in five years there's been a raid across the border. Yeah, and they had to pick on us for that one. Well, if the horses are in northern Mexico, I have friends down there that'll help me get them out. I sure hope they can. Otherwise, I'll be looking for a job. I'll do my best. Well, Red, let's you and I take a look across the border. See you later. I headed across the border to see my old friend, Colonel Chavez. So that's why I came to see you, Colonel Chavez. Happy, my friend. If it were not so serious, I would laugh. Do you think that over 600 horses could be run across the border in my district without my men knowing something about it? <laughs> I've known you too long to think that. That's why Burke's story sounded a little fishy to me. I assure you, there was not the least sign of the trail of the horses on this side of the line. Burke's story is impossible. He sure made it sound good. Other men have made the mistake of trying to outsmart our friend Cassidy. Much to their sorrow. Bueno, then you are of the opinion that it was an inside job, eh? Right. That's why I may have to call on you for some help. I remember what you have done for my people. Whatever I can do shall be done. That's mighty white of you, Colonel, but me and Hoppy can take care of everything ourselves. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, Red gets the idea that he's a one-man army. Oh, Hoppy, just that every once in a while I forget to think. Once in a while? <laughs> but he usually comes through. A man after my own heart. If you wish, I can arrange to have men in civilian clothes to ride back with you to the Whitley Ranch. No, not yet. First, I want to find out who's behind this horse stealing. That is wise. Then you mean to have a talk with Nelson Whitley, eh? Yeah, within the hour. Then we'll have some idea what we're up against. Adios, mi amigo. Hasta la vista. Adios. Adios, Colonel. Red and I rode back to have a talk with this Nelson Whitley.
Looks like this Nelson Whitley just about owns the whole blame town. And most of the surrounding country as well. Where can I find Nelson Whitley? What do you want to see Nelson about? Who are you? Name's Dylan. What do you want? I'll tell that to Nelson Whitley. You can tell me. I happen to manage his place. I'm Nelson Whitley. Well, I'll be doggone. Nelson's a she. And I don't like arguments in my place. No wonder the rustlers run the horses off right under your nose, Fred. Those horses are a sore spot with me. I don't think I'm going to like you. Oh, most people don't like Red till they get to know him better. Well, I'm going to deny myself that pleasure. Now, there's the door, you big ape. Now, start moving or I'll have you thrown out. Listen, ma'am, I don't mind being called a big ape, but I have a strong aversion to being thrown out of anywhere. I've handled tough guys before. Bascom, throw these two out. I don't always agree with Red, but I, too, have a strong aversion about being thrown out of anywhere. Toss them out. The way it has to be. I'll take that one. How you doing, Red? I got a stubborn when he won't go down. We'll try letting loose of him. Maybe he'll drop. until I've chased you out of here. Are you going to behave yourself, or do I have to turn you over my knee and give you a spanking? You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? I believe you would. That's better. What did you want to see me about? Horses. 625 of them. Put up your gun, Red. You won't need it. Is that understood, Dylan? Yeah, boss. And we can talk in my office. This way. I'm, I'm sorry I acted the way I did, but ever since Dad died eight years ago and left me as Enterprises, I've had to fight men for one reason or another. Well, it looks like you've handled everything all right. My name is Bill Cassidy. It's U.S. Marshal Cassidy. Temporarily. Yeah, I'm Red Connors, uh, Hoppy's deputy, temporarily. <laughs> Hoppy? Well, you must be Hopalong Cassidy. That's right. My father often spoke of you. He used to say there was no one quite like you. And now I understand why. I was very fond of your father. That's why I'd like to help you. Uh, sit down and talk. Thank you. Well, I'm sure by now that you know why I'm here. I think I know how important those horses are to the government. How far do you trust your foreman? Burke? About as far as I trust most men. And that's not too far. Why do you ask? I have an idea the stealing of those horses might be an inside job. Impossible. Where could he sell that many expensive horses without being found out? They might have been paid off to make sure the government didn't get the horses. I don't think I understand. There are certain foreign interests here that would pay a lot of money to make sure that Cuba doesn't get any help of any kind. And those horses would be a big help. I'm beginning to see what you mean. Yeah, Hoppy's got the idea them horses are boxed up in a canyon somewhere to die of thirst or starvation. Who'd be rotten enough to do a thing like that? I'll send for Burke and you can beat the truth out of him. No, not yet. I don't want you to do that. It may give the others a chance to destroy the horses in some other way if they knew what I was planning. I not only want the horses, I want whoever Burke sold out to. Do you know of any strangers that have been here in the district in the last two or three weeks? Uh, anyone with a lot of money or importance? None that answer that description. What do you know of anyone new in the district? Only the dealer we hired two weeks ago, and he came well recommended from Mexico. Where from in Mexico? Matamoros, I think. I'd like to have a look at him. When can I meet him? Right now, if you want. He's out in the bar. Good. Gardena? Senorita. This is Mr. Cassidy. Pleased to meet you, senor. How do you do, sir? Miss Whitley tells me you're from Matamoros. I wonder if you happen to know my friend Don Romero Diaz down there. 
has a hacienda on the Matamoros River just outside of town. Oh, surely I know him, senor. Everyone knows Don Romero. And how is he? Have you seen him lately? Within the past year, he was quite well. Thanks, I'm glad to hear that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to get word off to headquarters that your horses have been stolen by Mexican rustlers. And there's nothing they can do about it except look for horses elsewhere. Well, then I suppose all I can do is just take my loss and like it. I guess that's all you can do. Goodbye. So long. I knew you got something on your mind, but uh, why did you say we're giving up? Throw Gardino off the track. Why? I don't think he's ever been in Matamoros. I don't think he's a Mexican or even Spanish. And if there's a Matamoros River, it's news to me. And besides, my friend Don Romero Diaz has been dead for five years. And he fell for the trick. Sure. What do we do now? Back to the border and Colonel Chavez. Maybe we can learn some more about Senor Gardena. He could be our man. Again, we were on our way to see Colonel Chavez. And do you know, Hoppy, it took us over 20 days to get the men and equipment to that place. <laughs> With your permission, eh? Surely. Ah, it is the answer to my telegram to headquarters. I will translate. Regarding information requested concerning one Ramon Gardena, it is one of his many assumed names. He is not Mexican and is believed to be of Central European ancestry. He was expelled from Mexico two months ago on suspicion that he is a foreign espionage agent. That's all I need to hear. Now I want four year men in civilian clothes and I'll take the responsibility for them being on our side of the border. It will be as you wish. I personally will select three of my best men. With Colonel Chavez, Hoppy said he wanted four men. There shall be four men, my friend. Three others and myself. Thanks, Colonel. Now, uh, what do you plan to do? Uh, you and your men had better stake out near the Whitley Ranch. I think I can trick Gardena into showing us where those horses are hidden. And if my plan works out, I think we should. Order 50 more of each. Right. Excuse me. Your horses have been found. They have? Wonderful. Where did you find them? I didn't. It was a couple of Mexican wood gatherers. The horses are boxed up in a canyon on this side of the border. I just got word from Alanche. That's the best news I've heard in a long time. Now, we're on our way to Alanche now. Within a few hours, your horses should be back in their own pastures. Come on, Red. Hoppy, you think Gardena fell for it? I'm betting he did. Dylan did too. Huh? You think Dylan's in on it too? Well, he nearly fell over when I said those horses were boxed up in a canyon. Come on, I want to get staked out. staked out on the road that leads to the Whitley Ranch. If my guesses had been correct all the way down the line, it wouldn't be long before Gardena and Dillon would be riding to the Whitley Ranch to tell Burke what had happened, and then figure out a way to destroy the horses. My guesses had been right.
waited until we could trail them without being seen. Colonel Chavez was following my instructions perfectly. Hi, Colonel. Well, they're doing exactly what we wanted them to. Birds of a feather, my friend. My hunches were still working out. They had picked up Burke. in the dead-end ravine were the horses. Logs had been placed across the narrow entrance to the steep wall ravine, making a perfect cage for the horses. Now it was just a question of rounding up Gardena and the men who had sold out to him. They had set the ravine on fire. With the wind blowing down the ravine, it would be only a matter of minutes until there would be nothing left except blackened ashes. Now the diabolical plan to destroy the horses was clear. You go after the men. We'll get the horses. I sent Colonel Chavez and his men to keep the Gardena outfit off our necks, while Red and I went to break down the barrier that kept the horses in the ravine. Keep going around that way. Steady from for another lado, eh? Shots meant that Colonel Chavez had caught up with the Gardena outfit.
morning, Red. Keep them moving. The horses were all safe. They'd run for the nearest feed and water, and we could round them up later. The fire in the ravine would burn itself out in a few hours. Now to find Colonel Chavez. The shooting had died out. He might need help. But Chavez didn't need any help. He had carried out his end of the job just as I felt sure he would. Nice work, Colonel. All right, you three, get to your horses. Let's get out of here. Well, that just about takes care of everything, Miss Whitley. Gardena, Burke, and Bascom are in jail waiting for trial. Your horses are in the pasture under government guard. For a couple of days' good feeding, they'll be on their way to the railhead. You've done a great job, Hoppy. But in one move, you've deprived me of a manager, a foreman, a bouncer, and a dealer. <laughs> now, don't you think you ought to do something about that? Well, uh, just what, for instance? I'd like to have you take charge of things for me. Everything. Well, I appreciate the offer very much, but Twin Rivers is my home range. I have more than I can take care of there. I understand Twin Rivers is a growing community. I may come up there in the near future to look over the opportunities for investments. We'd be very glad to see you. Well, goodbye, Miss Whitley. Goodbye, Hoppy, and thanks for everything. Goodbye, Red. Say, ma'am, uh, could I ask a question? Go ahead and ask. How come you have a man's last name for your first name? Red, I've been asked that same question hundreds of times. But for you, I'm going to answer it. You see, my father's name was Whitley, and my mother's name was Jones. I had an Aunt Sophie and an uncle named Hemingway. So they all got together and decided to name me Nelson. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, that's a long way to the bar, Twitty. <laughs> Hoppy. Yeah? I wonder how come they gave her a man's last name for a first name. Well, it's like this, Red. Her father's name was Whitley. Her mother's name was Jones. Now, she had an aunt Sophie and an uncle named Hemingway. So they all got together and decided to call her Nelson. Don't you get it? Well, sure. But how come they gave her a man's last name for her first name? Ha, 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 ha. Come on, this could go on forever. <laughs> What a character. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hoppy. There he goes, on his way, down the moonlit trail to where cowboys ray. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. Again. There's no use to say goodbye until then.